Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at how we can go about painting some uh, German Volksgrenadiers for um, the Ardennes Offensive. Uh, if you're new to Flames of War, then the new German Bulge book is being released and that, hence the video being made. So initially to start off with, I'm going to be painting the model, the entire model uh, in German camo black brown, Vallejo. All the models I use today are Vallejo, so they're all water-based and very easy to follow along. I'm showing all the paints I use, so um, skip ahead to the part that you want to see if you want to. So to paint the initial uh, German field grey, I'm going to be using Vallejo Dark Mud. Uh, I like to paint my mid uh, miniatures one at a time or um, individually. I'm not the sort of type that likes to put them on like an ice cream stick or base them and then paint. It's all uh, personal preference. Whatever you, whatever's going to work best for you is um, what you should go for. So as you can see here, I'm painting um, the grey coat, but I'm leaving little bits of the darker brown. Um, that's just to sort of show like uh, a shadow or a um, to show the recesses. So it's giving definition to that grey coat, and you can see the creases in that a lot easier. So you can be quite generous here. Don't be afraid to mess up because you can always go back over with that black brown and fix it up. I will say that um, this technique is one that I found from a YouTuber who goes by the name of Panzer Schul, um, or Frank, if they if you know him on Facebook. Um, fantastic um, bloke and some awesome tutorials on his uh, YouTube channel i'll link that in the description below this is where i learn a lot of my tricks um i've sort of tweaked it but that's what you do so you watch these videos get an understanding of what different people do and build it around what uh, works best for you so please um go and look at his videos if you haven't which i'm sure most of you probably have already um and yeah you'll really uh you really enjoy those videos i know i certainly do learn learn a lot from watching his videos over the last few years. So I've sped it up because obviously there's not a whole lot I can show you here. I'm just, the main thing is to make sure you're leaving some of those darker lines just to give some detail um, and some depth to that gray coat. Uh, don't forget to paint the trousers. Um, if you're painting a wintry sort of uniform, you probably want to avoid painting tr white trousers and stuff if you're going to be basing them in snow just because it will wash out. Um, but I have done, as you've seen in the in the photos at the start. So it can work. It's just up to you what you want to go for. So I'm just sort of looking over it now, making sure that I've captured everything. You really need one coat of this. It's a quite a bright colour, um, and you know it stands out nicely. It's not thin, so you you don't need a second coat. Well, I certainly didn't. So that's the base of the uniform um, put down. Now this is where I like to go a little bit different. So um, if you know anything about German uniform throughout the Second World War, the field grey comes in a variety of colours. Um, so I like to mix it up and I add a bit of um, German field grey World War II uniform or something like that. It's Vallejo. I'm pretty sure I show it in a minute. Um, and it adds sort of like a minty look to it. Um, and that's the sort of look you want to be going for with uh, Field Grey, or at least from the photos that I've seen and some of the uniforms I've seen in museums. And that they sort of have like a little minty greenish tinge to them. So you will get that with this color. So I'm applying that over, um, over the dark mud, but not coating it on. So I want to leave bits of the dark mode just so at different lights you can you can make out the two different colors. This is personal preference. This is something that I've just found uh, actually enhances the color. It's quite a dark color so it's it's almost like dark on dark um, but you will notice it uh, and, and go with it if you want to try it. Go with it and um, then add your highlight color. So for highlighting the, the field gray uh, you want to make sure that you're using a, a rather light color and the best color that I'm a lot of people use is um, green gray Vallejo green gray so that's the green you can't really make it uh, sorry that's the World War II field gray 
uh, color that Vallejo do. You can't really make it out uh, in that light bit. When you're painting it, you'll definitely be able to make it out. So now moving on to green gray, as I said before, this is going to be the highlight color. So any of those sharp edges um, from the gray coat, uh, any creases, I'm going to sort of highlight around there. And I'm also going to be using a different brush. I'm going to be using my Army Painter Insane Detail brush for this. Sometimes I get lazy and I'll use my bigger brush. The brush, the bigger brush that I use is a Games Workshop um, Layer S um and highlight with it it works both ways you can just get finer lines with this smaller brush but if you'd rather just keep using the same brush then yeah just go for it because I, I sort of had the same sort of success but i do like this uh, this brush for the finer details you can see with the brush as well i'm only putting a dab of paint on on the very end of it don't just smother your brush in paint because there's a good chance that you might um you know uh, jolt a little bit or, or move and that could um, smudge what you've just done and you've got to go around and fix it up and it can be a bit of a pain in, in the ass. I've, I've done it a few times and uh, said a few choice words after I've done it especially when you take the amount of time that you do to make them look better than just your sort of average job that um, you, some people like to do um, just because they want to paint it quicker. It's, it's completely up to you. I know a lot of people like the painting aspect. Some people just want a game and they just want to get the model painted. There's no nothing wrong with that. It's just I'm more of a painter and I know there's a lot of um, people out there, especially within my community, that pr would rather um, game. And, you know, that's the, the joy of this hobby. Um, so you can see that I'm painting those finer, sharper lines, and I'm just doing little lines. It's hard to see in this video. Uh, apologies, is because this is my first uh, infantry painting video, but you can sort of get an idea of the where those um, recesses are. Just where, um, just before we get to the recess, I'm painting that sharper line on there. So hopefully, you'll be able to see it a bit better in this. You can sort of get an idea of what I've done there. So that was um, the three colors that I used there for the field gray. So next in the gray coat, there's sort of like, um, I don't even know what you'd call it, but where it folds out at the top, um, it's like a really dark green. I thought it was black at first, but upon further um, inspection and, and viewing uh, different gray coats online from that period it's a very dark green so i use vallejo german uniform for that now i want to paint the helmet in um, a white so to start off with i'm going to paint the helmet deck tan and don't be afraid to um, go quite heavy with it just smother it on there but again taking your time you don't want to go be make, you don't want to be making too many mistakes where you're going to be spending half an hour cleaning everything up. If you can sort of avoid doing that, then that shaves off a lot of time in the cleanup process. But don't be afraid to go, um, you know, a little bit hard and then make, make the odd mistake where you've gone just past the helmet or something. That's okay. You can easily fix that. So don't don't stress about that. I, I did it here. Um, I put a bit too much paint on and it sort of ran. I'm making sure the brush is a little bit wet when I'm painting with these water-based paints as well. All right, so now I'm moving on to um, Vallejo Black. So I'm painting the webbing black. I'm painting the gun black, so the MG34. I'm going to be paint painting his boots black, the handle of his ammo crate black, uh, the top of his sort of jerry can black, not jerry can, sorry, water bottle, the knife that's on his shovel. I believe it's a knife anyway. Um, black there's a lot on here that's going to be black a lot of the uniform oh sorry the equipment that will be black so with this in the uniform this is the longest part for me if um, this takes the longest so I've sped it right up so I'm showing you I'm painting all of that black apologies that the actual models out of the shot for that split second there Okay, so that's the black painted. You can sort of get an idea. It's still quite dark, um, but that's how it's coming out so far. So now we're moving on to the actual white of the helmet. So I use uh, foundation white. 
or to me a white it's really up to you but this for the sake of this video i or any white really but for the sake of this video i'm keeping it all with vallejo so i'm using foundation white and i'm just going along the outer edge of the helmet and then i'm going to leave a sort of line between the, of the deck tan between the top of the helmet and the outer edge, edge of the helmet which will leave uh sort of nice little darker white line around which will show you where the German helmet starts to bulge out at the side um, sort of gives it a bit more definition and you can make it out a little bit easier so the whole helmet isn't white up to you the next step that you could do from here is dry brush some um, dark mud of that like German green uh, just to show that there's a bit of wear there but it's completely uh, up to you as I've said many times and I'm also painting the white there just to show that he's a Volksgrenadier So that's how he's coming out so far. So as you can see, he's coming out quite nice. Um, looks a lot better in person. It's terrible uh, footage from my end, so I do apologize. Um, so next I'm painting uh, over the areas where I've made a, a little mistake here and there. If I've gone over, if I need to go into one of those recesses or something like that, then I'll, I'll fix them up here. I know you can't really see what's going on, but I'm painting the outer edge of the helmet where I made a mistake with that white that I was just using prior, or deck tan. And now I'm just having a quick look, inspecting the model, where what else needs to be touched up. Just touching up everything. So take your time here because you don't really want to be touching up past here um, because you're going to be doing a lot of a lot of the um, equipment that he's wearing and carrying. All right, so now I've moved on. I didn't show you the paint I was using here, but it's Vallejo uh, dark grey. Um, sorry, Vallejo German grey. Um, and I'm painting all of the metallic areas. So the, the gun, um, MG34, so I'm painting all those sharp edges, adding a little bit of definition onto that because, you know, black washes out quite easily. And then I'm going to um, highlight the webbing. So I'm highlighting the webbing with this uh, German grey. I'm then also going to highlight his boots and I'm going to then put a layer of this down on his water bottle and the knife. So as I've said already, it does take time guys, so just bear with it. The process it's a little bit longer than what you'd be, um, you know, if you're trying this out, what you'd be used to, but it, it really does pay off in the end. So that's where I've got to so far. Looking good, in my humble opinion. Now I want to paint his greener equipment. So his ammo uh, box, if he had a spare MG, the case that that goes in. Um, is a gas canister or gas mask canister all those kind of items so I'm painting them in Vallejo brown violet You see, I'm still trying to leave those nice brown lines there in there, especially on that ammo box. The great thing about Battlefront models is they've got tons of detail. So you, it's really easy to see. You don't have to sort of pretend or make up the detail through the painting. So that German uh, dark brown that we use at the very start to, to uh, base the model, the entire model, really helps 
with that. So those details are now captured with that dark brown. You don't want to really be using black because you're going to be using black for the boots and such. So try and keep the the shaded areas and that in a dark brown color. Now I'm going to highlight that with this German camo bright green. Now when you're painting it, it will look really uh, bright. But once it's dry, it sort of fades a little bit and it looks fantastic. I've actually even taken to using this for my splinter uh, green. It's very strong uh, of a color for splinter, but it's still really good for this scale. Um, definitely adds a lot of um, color to the model, which is what you want, because otherwise it's going to be a very dark model. And I've learned that from my own mistakes. So I'm just going to highlight, I'm just going along the sort of outer edges where that dark color is, any of the sharp lines. So because it's a rectangle box, it's really easy to highlight. And then with the gas canister, I'll just pick out the the bits that are lipped up of it. Um, and yeah, once it's done, you'll sort of look at it and go, oh, that looks quite good. All right, so now his ammo pouches and his bread bag, I'm going to be painting in medium gray. You can also use old wood, um, any of those sort of khaki, um, khaki, yeah, those khaki colors or, or just a little bit lighter than that is, is fantastic for this process. I'm also painting his shovel, so not the actual metal part of the shovel, but uh, where his shovel sits into the little case that it comes in and the string on the outer edge that... Um, I think holds in the knife. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not historically uh, accurate with my descriptions. I, I do apologize for that, but um, uh, I only know my the odd little bit about history. Uh, I just like to uh, to paint. So you can see that I'm just doing those that bread bag. The bread bags uh, the battlefield have on their old metal models also have a little hole I, i'm not sure uh what, what that's sort of showing but if you wanted to keep that on there um you can just sort of paint around that or um yeah it's up to you i don't it, it just looks like a black dot or a dark brown dot uh, if you don't eh, if you don't paint it and i'm just painting his little uh, ammo pouch there So the next stage is to highlight that, that medium gray. So I'm going to use Iraqi sand. Uh, it's a good color for highlighting. It's bright. Um, and yeah, so I'm getting the outer edges of the bread bag. This bread bag is sort of like folded on, folded in on itself. So you've got two lines that you can capture there. And I'm also adding a little bit of definition where the bread bag's not going to be 100% flat. So I'm just adding a couple of little lines along the middle of it just to um, show some sort of creases and that. I'm also highlighting where the shovel is, um, the shovel case, and the, uh, the sort of tie around there. And I'm also going to highlight the ammo pouch here. Again, just there's some nice sharp lines and bits that stick out that I can capture with that paintbrush. And I'm using that um, insane detail army painter brush again. All right, so let's have a look. So it's looking, it's coming along nicely. Um, so the next stage is to paint some of the wood. So to start off with, I'm going to be using flat earth. And I'm painting the um, the, the stock of the uh, MG34. I'm also going to be painting the water bottle in um, flat earth. And the shovel handle in uh, flat earth. So anything wood, anything wooden. It's going to be in flat earth. Again, take your time with the equipment. We don't want to be making too many mistakes here. So just a little tiny bit on the brush at a time. Make sure you're dipping that brush in water, you know, pretty much every time you, you're using it. Um, 
And now moving on to German uh, media camo brown. So that's going to be for um, his pistol. So he's got a pistol, so his holster for the pistol. It's also going to be used for, it can be used for his water bottle. It's up to you. Um, you can use flat earth or the um, or this German camo brown, medium brown. You can also paint if there's like a sort of ammo pouch that looks a little bit different um, or a pouch, then you can also use that color just to stop it from all looking the same. So at this stage, I'm just painting his, his holster in this color. So again, just make sure you're using, you're cleaning your brush every time you use it with some lukewarm water. Once I'm happy with that, I'm gonna highlight those wooden areas with German camo pale brown. You can use a brighter color for this. This is quite dull in terms of lighter colors. You could use orange brown or you could use light brown. They're very bright though. Um, so I only really use them on my tanks when it comes to infantry wooden weapons. And so like rifles and the, the buttstock of the MGs, I'll, I'll, I'll use the um, camo brown light, pale, sorry, pale camo brown um, just to, um, so it's not so bright. Now I'm highlighting those that pistol uh, holster with orange brown, with a layer of orange brown. Again, just make sure you're capturing those um, straight lines. And highlighting is great for adding, you know, definition as I've said, and some depth. Okay, now I'm highlighting the actual shovel holder, um, sorry, holder, the actual um, handle, that's the word I was looking for, in uh, Vallejo light brown. Okay, now I'm moving on to beige brown, and that's the strap that goes around his body um, for his gas canister, gas mask canister, I keep saying gas canister, okay. <laughs> gas mask canister um so yeah just paint that in whatever color you want i sort of want it to not be too dark so i want it to stand out and then i'm highlighting that with a brown sand just not going too crazy um just a little little dabs here and there just to give it just make it stand out a little bit more all right so that's pretty much all the equipment done um that's how he's coming out so far now we're moving on to the gun so it, the gun's going to be highlighted in luftwaffe uniform world war ii it's up to you here if you want to use a silver or if you want to use like a lighter gray i like the luftwaffe uniform world war ii for highlighting um metal items because it's a bit more bluey um, Remembering that a lot of guns are very dark, all right? So it's not, they're not like a chrome or anything like that, unless you're painting like a Desert Eagle or something. Um, but especially World War II weapons, they're very dark. So you don't want to be going too crazy. Um, but if that's what you want to do and you want to go the silver, the silver looks great because it stands out. Um, you can use a, a very, a darker silver too, but I know a lot of people prefer the grayer, lighter grays, and that's something that I prefer too. I'm also painting the top of the water bottle because it's like a metal cup in um, while well, I'm highlighting it that. And then I do an additional highlight. So a highlight on top of a highlight, if you will. Um, very light with this. I just use the um, Vallejo London Grey just to add a little bit more detail through that highlight. Um, it's up to you if you want to skip the Luftwaffe World War II and just go straight to uh, uh, London Grey or if you want to use a different light grey. Um, but this is this is my method. If you look at it and you think that the gun's a bit too bright, this is where a black wash would come in quite nice because you'll still get a bit of that highlight color 
um, and it would be just um, darkened a touch for a black wash. It's up to you. I'll do that later on in this video. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really personal preference. And that's what all painting uh, miniatures is about, is what works best for you and what you enjoy doing the most and what you get out of it. Um, it you know, you've got to make sure it works for you. I'm also painting his buttons on his grey coat with this London grey, straight up London grey. So I left the dark brown on there. I'm just painting them London grey and also his uh, belt buckle. No highlights, just straight up London grey. Now I'm moving on to his skin. So I'm going to base his skin with German camo pale brown. So you want to make sure you're capturing his nose, the cheeks, the chin. Uh, if he's got ears, his ears, the back of his head, um, hands. Just make sure you're capturing all, but leaving a little bit of definition. So leave a little bit of brown underneath his eyebrow to uh, show that there's eyes there. Leave a little, a, a couple of lines where his mouth would be. Um, you could, you know, put in a mustache or something if you really wanted to, using that sort of same method. Ha hands and fingers, make sure you're capturing those and that the fingers are individual. Um, I try and capture all of the fingers. You might want to just do a couple. Um, because they are very hard to do, but if you use a very fine brush, um, you can you can do it. And if you make a mistake, don't feel don't be afraid to go around and fix it up, especially with the flesh part. Now moving on to flat flesh, so this is going to be a lot brighter, and you can see I've moved away from my finer detail brush. This would this would be where it would come in handy, but. Um, I really like the brush that I'm using here, so I've just kept with it. I think you'll find that I do make a little mistake though, so I probably should have used a smaller brush. So I'm leaving some of that lighter brown on the outer edge of where I'm painting, um, just to give it that depth. I'm then adding in, I'm painting his fingers and, and his, his hand and all of that with this flat flesh. It, the model at this stage should be coming together really nicely. You should be looking at it going, oh my God, it's almost finished. Um, with very few mistakes if you've taken your time here. And that's the essence of it all, taking your time. Don't rush it. If you want a nice looking model, you have to take your time. Um, and I wish I was talking to myself a few years ago because I used to rush. Um, so now I'm highlighting that. Um, skin with basic skin tone so it's a it's a lot lighter it's almost like a pinky white so i'm just dabbing it on like the, the top of the nose maybe a cheek or two and just the outer edge of his hand okay so that's where we're up to so far We've got a couple bits to do, so we've got to do his uh, weapon strap. Um, I'm going to base it in uh, like a light, lighter grey or white colour. So I use splinter camo base as the initial colour and then I highlight with Vallejo deck tan. So make sure you're, before you start painting, you know where the strap's going. Because sometimes it sort of goes underneath an arm, comes around a bit of the arm and then goes, gets hidden away somewhere else. So I sort of like to trace where it's going just so I know where I'm painting. I don't accidentally paint over something that shouldn't have been painted, which isn't the strap. Well, I'm also painting this strap in a very light color because I don't want it to wash out with the uniform. I really want that to stand out. Um... I know most of the straps are probably a lot darker, but I find this color works better. Okay, now moving on to uh, beige brown for the chin strap. So his helmet chin strap, I'm painting in beige brown. No highlight needed here. If you want to add a highlight, you could go with um, a lighter brown. Not necessary, for, especially with the amount of chin strap that's showing here. It's really not necessary. Now I'm going to deck tan, as I said before, 
and I'm highlighting his um, his weapon strap. Just where the sort of strap would be folding in on itself, you want to just show that there's two lines there. That's what you're trying to get with that highlight. Now I'm going back over what I've done with German Camo Black Brown. Uh, sorry, not way over. I'm fixing up any mistakes that I've done. Um, so I made a couple of mistakes um, where I painted the skin and sort of he had no eyes or it was all skin. Um, so I'm added a bit of black there, just or black brown, just to show that there, there's eyes there or a bit of a bit of shadow underneath his um, his eyebrows. And then, as I said before, uh, with the metallic part of it, I was a bit, I thought it just came across a bit too bright. So I put a black wash on over the top of it. Normally you'd put a wash on then highlight, but this combination actually comes out really nicely. If you want a darker look at we looking weapon, especially for an MG32 or, uh, sorry, MG34 or an MG42. Um, I like this, but it's up to you what you want to do. This is not technically correct and that is the finished product so that's him all painted up now um, i think it's come out quite nicely please let me know what you think in the um in the comments uh, sorry it's a little bit longer but i really hope this helps out don't forget to check out um, panzer shaw's channel um, and if you like this video please let me know what you want me to do later on um, and yeah like and subscribe if you can thanks for all the support i've really appreciated it Thank you very much. Goodbye.